So it's a, it's a lovely day on the North Hampshire Downs and what we're standing on is hundreds of feet of chalk, calcium carbonate. Now this chalk was formed around about 100 million years ago in the time of the Cretaceous, which was the time of the dinosaurs. And if you imagine, let's say the Bahamas, a very different environment to what we have today, we basically had warm tropical seas. So where I'm standing now would have been the bottom of the ocean. And we had millions and millions and millions of tiny microscopic planktonic organisms called coccoliths who had calcite skeletons that would die and then descend and be deposited on, on the ocean floor. And after millions of years of deposit after deposit, we had enough substrata that was being compacted to form the rock that we have today, which is chalk. Now we're interested in chalk from a freshwater ecology perspective because basically it's, it's like a huge sponge. Chalk is a very porous rock and it soaks up water. It's a sponge, it is the aquifer for the chalk streams that we have today that are very important in this part of the world, in, in southern Hampshire. Chalk streams are rare. We're looking at maybe 200, 225 chalk streams around the world that we know of and they are, they are basically formed in only those areas where you have chalk geology which tends to be southern England and eastern parts of England and the northern parts of Europe, France, Belgium and places like that. So incredibly rare environments and we're going to go and investigate some of those chalk streams in, 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 in the areas where they spring which tends to be the valleys such as the Kennet Valley that we have below us here. Once the chalk river or the, or the chalk streams emerged at the bottom of the downs, this is what we tend to see in the very upper reaches. And, and you can see here the, the nature of a, you know, the up, upper reaches of a chalk stream and also the intensive agriculture, in this case sheep, in, in, in the surrounding landscape. So now we're further downstream, away from the downs, the rolling, undulating chalk scenery, and we're probably still in the upper reaches. We've not quite got to the middle reaches of the Kennet yet, but we're in the, the, the river's obviously got a lot wider, and it's more here, more like what you'd expect of a natural chalk stream. If you look at the gravel, for example, it's relatively clear. I mean, this is what we're looking at with chalk stream gravels gravels and flints of around about that size. I've not seen any big boulders or anything like that. Now think about what the criteria are or the characteristics of a chalk stream. Basically it's groundwater fed, it's come from the aquifer, so it tends to be a constant flow. We're not talking about a flashy, spatey, dynamic river, it's a constant flow, predominantly base flow. Also has a relatively constant temperature, around about 12 degrees at the, where it rises from the springs pH is neutral, around about 7.2 pH, and we've got a really quite productive system. Hard water geology, we've got a lot of plant nutrients, so we're in a shaded area here, but when you've got less shade and you've got a lot of light penetration, you have a lot of plant growth, and it's famous for various plants such as ranunculus. It's also very important habitat for salmonids, salmon and trout, that use this type of gravel to spawn in. So what a female would do is she would come and dig out using her caudal fin, going onto a side, flapping a caudal fin, dig out a little pot or a hole or a nest called a red, and there lay the eggs. And the male would immediately come in and fertilize those eggs. They'd move upstream a little bit and then they'd keep cutting again and that would force more gravel to cover up those eggs. So the eggs are in the interstices, they're in between the gaps of that gravel. So what's really important is that there's a good through flow of water to provide oxygen to those developing embryos and also to take away metabolic byproducts, the metabolic waste. So important salmon habitat, but what we have in a lot of our rivers and particularly chalk streams is 
a high degree, a high density of river infrastructure and sometimes they're quite small, such as this weir. What we have, if you focus on that, is a series of pipes that are to convey the water under what is a small bridge. That in itself is a problem for the movement of fish. Okay, so if you think about what a culvert is, those pipes, then under periods of low flow, there's insufficient water often for the fish to get through that pipe. Under periods of high flow, the velocities through the pipe can be so great as to be greater than the swimming capability of the fish so they can't move through. And you can really see with these culverts is that they're what we call perched. The water's flowing and because of, we've had a process of scour, there's a pool there, and what we've got is a difficulty for a lot of species of fish to actually enter those culverts. So we have a lot of these infrastructure, a lot of these type of structures that block the movement of fish, but they also change the geological features of the actual river itself. So again, focusing on this gravel, what the water's doing because of that scouring, it's purging the gravel. So we've got really nice quality gravel here, really good quality gravel. If we move over to the other side, we'll see what the problem is. So follow me. So on the upstream side, we've got much lower flows. And here, we've got the deposition of the fine sediment. Now this is the fine sediment that's coming off agriculture. A big problem because it's bringing all this silty clay material that's going to clog up that gravel. It's also, remember what I said about chalk streams being very productive, a lot of plant nutrients, we're also pushing off from agriculture the nitrates, which can lead to cultural eutrophication. But you'll see the difference, and I'm sinking in here, between the type of gravel, between the type of substrate in that river, between the upstream, you know, we're talking three metres away from the upstream and the downstream. Downstream we've got really nice, um, clean gravels. Upstream you have these deposits. Now this is habitat for some species, such as lamprey, but from the perspective of salmonids, it's a real big problem. And because in rivers such as the Kennet, where there's been a huge amount of abstraction of water for human use, you have a situation where the flows are lower than they would be naturally, and therefore the river has less potential to pur purge those gravels with um, purge those gravels of this fine sediment. So we're having greater and greater accumulations of this sediment with no means by which the river can get rid of it. And here you can just get the feel for just how chock-a-block this sediment is with these fine sediments that have come off the fields, part of our part of the consequences of the agricultural practices that we employ means that these chalk streams are now really inundated with very, very fine silty sediment. So this is where we really see one of the real problems. The, the proximity, the close proximity of agricultural land that's been recently ploughed and the watercourse and a very limited buffer strip in many places. So what we have during periods of high rainfall is a lot of overland flow straight into the chalk stream and that's bringing all this fine sediment, all this fine silt, anything under two millimetres is considered a fine sediment that is clogging up the interstices of the natural um, chalk stream gravel. Possibly not such a big issue here because we're relatively flat, flat land, but if we have areas where you've got quite a clear gradient, quite a, quite a slope, then what you'll tend to have is much more of that overland flow straight into the water course unless you've got appropriate mitigation. So what can we do? One of the things that we can do is operate at a very localised scale and in many cases you're really only dealing with the symptoms of the problem rather than the root cause of it. But one of the approaches that has been employed by the Environment Agency over the years is the use of what they call um, gravel cleaning mechanisms where you use high pressurised hoses and you put them into the gravel and you literally blow away, you purge the gravel 
with this high pressured water taking the sediment downstream. Now of course in that scenario what you're doing is just putting a sticky plaster onto the real problem, it's moving the problem downstream. However, if you've got important historic spawning sites for, for salmon, then it can be an appropriate uh, method to try and maintain the quality of those gravels for that particular historic spawning site. More locally, again, you can use, as I mentioned, buffer strips is when you have an area of, of land that acts as a barrier from the agricultural land to the watercourse. So it's a buffer and it's a, a way to try and slow down the rate at which that fine sediment enters the rivers and also the nutrients and the nitrates that come off, off the land with that water. The bigger the buffer strip, the more vegetation obviously, the better. But the other thing we can do really relates to a larger catchment scale uh, restoration and that is change agricultural practices and one of the big problems that has been over the years is the change to pig farming in the upland hills and that produces a lot of sediment that's easily flushed off into the streams so change agricultural practices away from that the other thing that became a real big problem was the planting of winter maize and what happened then is that these were planted at the time of year that was different to how it had been historically and a lot of sediment was being flushed off in the autumn and winter into, into the rivers and then again clogging up the gravels. Another process that people talk about, particularly on slopes, is something called contour ploughing, where instead of ploughing up and down the slope, you plough along the contours, you plough around the, uh, the, 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 the slope itself. So there's various things that can be done, but often to have a real effect, you have to do it at catchment scales, it has to involve various enterprises and it needs people to buy into it.